you won't believe what they found on the moon. These shocking discoveries by Chinese scientists have astounded everyone and given us the answers to some of the biggest mysteries. China made a small but important step toward becoming a space power less than two years ago. Oceanus Procellarum, which is Latin for Ocean of Storms, is a gigantic lunar mare that appears as a massive dark area from Earth. According to the China National Space Administration, the Asian giant dispatched a robotic spaceship there for the first time on the moon's youngest terrain. The Chang'e 5 probe from China touched down close to Mount Rumpke, a 50-kilometer-long mass that towers about a mile into the sky. It collected lunar samples and sent them to the orbital module above the moon using a robotic arm. They were then sent back to Earth from there. By the way, all of this happened in a single lunar day, which is roughly equal to 14 days on Earth. These were the first lunar samples taken since the Soviet mission Lunik 24 in 1976, and their study has now produced some unexpected findings. Specifically, the question about the presence of lunar water. It's one of the biggest lunar riddles, according to the Chinese Space Agency. You see, a planet the size of Mars is thought to have collided with Earth more than 4 billion years ago, creating the Moon. The collision caused a portion of the Earth to break off, and molten rock covered it. It was believed that the temperatures were so high that all the water evaporated forever. The Moon still has water in it, and not just a few drops here and there. There's lots of it in the form of ice, as multiple robotic missions and terrestrial telescopes have demonstrated in recent years. A large portion of this water is found at the poles, where it's always in the dark. The first crewed expedition to the moon in 50 years will land precisely in these uncharted areas, according to NASA. The reason the expedition is landing there is because the region has water, which might provide some nutrition for the personnel that might someday travel to Mars, as well as the raw materials for rocket fuel. Fascinating, isn't it? In fact, it was unknown where this frozen water originated from until recently. What's more, in the sunlit regions of the Moon, ice has also been discovered by other spacecraft. However, scientists were unable to identify how it got there. They speculate that it might have come via an asteroid or a previously undiscovered water reservoir. Researchers from the Chinese Academy of Sciences and two counterparts from Europe claim in a paper that the material sent by Chang'e 5 have the key to understanding the origin of lunar water. These samples, which were taken from the northwest of the Moon, contain impact glass beads, which are tiny grains of glass of various colors that most likely formed at the high temperatures following a meteorite collision with the Moon. These glass beads that Shang'u 5 collected, according to the study published in the journal Nature Geoscience, contain trace levels of water. According to Sen Hu from the Planetary Physics Laboratory at CAS, there are 2,000 parts per million of water in the crystals, or 2,000 kilos for every tonne of soil. As a result of the frequent and widespread meteorite strikes on the Moon, glass beads can be found anywhere on the planet, from the equator to the poles. The researcher claims that even though hydroxyl is presumably more commonly found, the lunar water may also be in its molecule state. 270 billion tons of water are thought to be preserved on the Moon as impact glass particles, according to researchers. Plus, in comparison to previous estates, this reservoir is enormous. For instance, a NASA radar estimated in 2010 that the North Pole of the Moon's craters held around 600 million tons of ice. The samples acquired by the Chinese spacecraft are roughly a billion years younger than those that were gathered by the astronauts during the American Apollo program and the robotic missions of the Soviet Union. According to the most recent research, these glass beads have been forming for the past 2 billion years, 
and more have formed during times of violent meteorite collisions, like the one that killed off the dinosaurs 68 million years ago when a huge meteorite struck Earth. Turns out, the water trapped in the lunar crystals was produced by the Sun. Positively charged hydrogen atoms from a solar wind are thought to have entered the glass beads and mixed with the oxygen inside of them, according to an examination of the various sorts of hydrogen atoms present in the samples. These glass beads may also release some of their hydrogen charge when the temperature is high enough from sun radiation, and the moon's water cycle is controlled by these glass beads. Guess what? This may also serve as a different water source. And where there's water, there's life. That's not the only thing they found, by the way. Scientists are thrilled by the discovery of a rare lunar crystal on the moon's side, which could one day supply the entire globe with endless energy. The lunar crystal is composed of a substance that was previously unknown to science and has a crucial component for nuclear fusion, a method of producing energy that uses the same forces that power the Sun and other stars in the galaxy. The crystal which was discovered in lunar basalt particles recovered from the Moon in 2020 makes China the third country, after the US and the former Soviet Union, to find a new lunar mineral. By the way, this was the first lunar sample return mission since the 1970s. The collection and secure delivery of more than 1.7 kilograms of lunar samples to Earth. The phosphate mineral Chang'u site Y was given this name by the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology in honor of Shangyu, the lunar goddess in Chinese mythology. And get this, the translucent crystal is about the width of a human hair. Around 1.2 billion years ago, it developed in an area of the moon that experienced volcanic activity. Helium-3 one of the main components of this crystal may serve as a reliable fuel source for nuclear fusion reactors, according to scientists. On Earth, the element is super rare, but it appears to be fairly common on the Moon. The Shang'u-6 mission, which is anticipated to launch in 2024, will seek to gather the first samples from the Moon's far side, which is never visible to Earth. Even though it's too early for experts to predict the cost of such a fuel source, it'll surely be quite expensive. Of course, there's the issue of returning lunar crystals, particularly the huge quantities required to power fusion reactors. Helium-3 has long piqued the interest of scientists as a potential source of nuclear fusion fuel. Natural nuclear fusion reactions take place when two light atoms combine into one heavier atom under conditions of intense heat and pressure. They take place inside stars, but as of yet, no powerful enough fusion reactor has been built by humans to kickstart the process. According to the European Space Agency, Helium-3 is especially promising because it generates less radiation and radioactive waste than other elements. The current nuclear fission process, utilized in nuclear power plants, produces radioactivity in addition to electricity, necessitating the reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel into uranium, plutonium, and other waste. Since the process has caused massive safety issues, researchers have been working to find a technique to produce nuclear energy through nuclear fusion rather than fission. And this might be it. Since no radioactive waste is created during the fusion process, it might be a safer and more effective fuel source. Just imagine. The whole of the US could be powered for a year with about 25 tons of helium-3, which is the same as a fully loaded cargo bay of a space shuttle. This means that helium-3 has an estimated potential economic value of $3 billion per ton. In fact, 
The discovery might launch a full-blown competition between numerous commercial enterprises and nations with space agencies that have indicated their ambitions to mine the moon for helium-3. Let's not forget that in 2019, a strangely colored gel-like substance was discovered by China's Chang'e 4 lunar rover while conducting an investigation on the moon's far side. On lunar day 8, the mission's rover U-2-2 discovered that surprise. Scientists on the mission decided to delay the rover's other goals and instead direct its equipment towards attempting to identify the odd substance. With the help of operators at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, U-2-2 started navigating a path through a region filled with several minor impact craters. Excited by their discovery, the drive team contacted its lunar scientists, and together, the teams decided to cancel U-22's plans to travel further west and instead gave the rover instructions to investigate the mysterious substance. U-22 approached the crater, using its obstacle avoidance cameras to target the oddly colored substance and its environs. With its visible and near-infrared spectrometer, which detects light that is dispersed or reflected off materials to determine their composition, the rover analyzes both locations. What the colorful substance is, is still a mystery. Scientists and researchers hypothesized that the substance could be molten glass produced as a result of meteorites impacting the moon's surface. But the discovery made by U-22 isn't the first lunar surprise for astronomers. Harrison Schmidt and geologist Gene Cernan were both excited when they found orange-colored dirt close to the mission's Taurus Littrow landing location in 1972. In the end, lunar scientists came to the conclusion that the orange dirt was produced 3.64 billion years ago during a violent volcanic burst. Early in December 2018, Shang'u-4 was launched, and on January 3rd, it performed the first ever soft landing on the far side of the moon. By the end of Lunar Day 8, the U-22 rover had traveled a total of 890 feet. You see, the moon's craters serve as a historical record of asteroid strikes, both on the moon and on Earth. These strikes have mostly been the only thing that's altered the moon's surface over the past 3 billion years. A long history of asteroid strikes is preserved on the moon's inert surface. Due to their close proximity, asteroid impacts have a similar history for both the moon and the Earth. However, the moon still exhibits signs of impacts that are billions of years old, whereas geology and erosion have largely erased the majority of craters on Earth. They're smaller than a human red blood cell, known as microcraters that litter the surface of the moon. The fine-grained powder that covers the moon's surface is ground into powder by the moon's consistent pelting. As a result of how slowly this impact gardening of the lunar soil develops, the footprints of the Apollo astronauts will still be visible in at least a million years. Because of these craters, the hard landing of the Japanese lunar lander known as Hukoto-R Mission 1 was confirmed in April 2023 by photographs of debris taken by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. The privately funded spacecraft, launched by the business iSpace, was designed to touch down in the moon's Atlas crater, but as it descended quickly, it lost contact with mission control. Near the planned landing spot, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's camera team noticed an unusual surface change that included four large pieces of debris and changes in the lunar surface that might be signs of a tiny crater on the lander's remains. So, in order to get more data, NASA conducted a more in-depth analysis of the location along with iSpace to carry out more lunar exploration in the future. You see, by creating a lunar economy and infrastructure, they hope to help NASA's Artemis mission and make it simpler to reach the moon's surface. 
A third mission is being planned as part of their lunar exploration program, which will feature a second lander that will send a rover to the moon in 2024. With the aim of providing two to three trips per year after 2025, iSpace envisions providing high-frequency transportation to the lunar surface to assist scientific, exploratory, and technology demonstration missions. Takeshi Hakamada, the company's founder and CEO, is still dedicated to realizing the goal of creating a lasting lunar presence and advancing the growth of the lunar economy. Despite its failure, the Hakuto R Mission 1 was viewed by the firm as a useful learning opportunity that will guide its subsequent missions. For iSpace's lunar exploration program, the future lander and rover mission scheduled for 2024 has a lot of potential for more shocking discoveries. The objective of this mission will be to enhance scientific knowledge and lunar exploration capabilities. So watch this space for more exciting news. Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on the recent discoveries and make sure to subscribe for more. See you in the next video.